So look, this series is called Words to Live By, and what we're doing is we're taking wise sayings from the Bible, and we're looking a little more closely at them, and we're exploring why do these matter for us, and why should we apply them in our lives. So the very first week, a few weeks ago, we looked at discipline. It was that famous passage, spare the rod and spoil the child. And we looked at that and we said, you know what, the reality is that oftentimes discipline is equal to love, right? Love can't always be a yes, sometimes it has to be a no, sometimes discipline is required. And we said that that's actually good for us. Last week we looked at this other famous passage, you might have heard of it, it's called the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And we said that that's a really, really good thing to practice in life, like treat people the way you want them to treat you. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about our words. And I'm gonna be reading from Proverbs chapter 15, verse one. And I'll go ahead and read that to you right now. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. And what we're calling this is honey is nice. Now, I, I, I originally termed this because you know the saying, you get more flies with honey than vinegar? Not if you know that saying. Not like this if you've never heard that one before. My wife is nodding, no, of course. Yeah, so I, I picked it because of that. And then I thought, maybe not everyone likes honey. So just out of curiosity, show of hands for you in person. I wanna see your comments down below online. How many of you like honey? If you like honey, raise your hand. Yeah, all right, we got some woo-hoos online. I know you're commenting yes or no furiously. Here's the thing, maybe some of you are like my family. Most of my family doesn't like honey. So instead, maybe we could have called this everyone likes gifts, right? Everyone likes gifts or presents. It's just the same. Because what we're talking about today is using our words to either be sweet like honey or a blessing like a gift. The idea is that we wanna use our words for good things. Now, anyone who knows me knows that I'm a bit of a talker. And most people who've known me for any period of time have made like this motion to me while I'm talking. And what that means is, John, you are digging a hole. Stop talking, right? And my friends growing up in high school and in college would often do this for me because I would be saying things that would get me in trouble and I just like kept talking, thinking that would get me out of trouble. Today I'm gonna to tell you a story of the very one and only time that my talking and my mouth got me out of trouble. So let me set the scene for you. I am all of 17 years old. I'm driving in a car that is not my own. It's the young lady who's sitting in the backseat of the car, who's the best friend of my girlfriend who's also in the backseat of the car, and we are driving through the city of Scranton. These two are directing me as only the worst imaginable backseat drivers could. So they're saying things like, oh, right back there, you were supposed to turn. And I'm trying to follow those directions while dealing with that conversation going on behind me. I may or may not have missed a turn and tried to course correct and completely cut off a large man in a large truck in the middle of the city of Scranton. Now, that did happen. As we're driving, this guy took particular exception to me cutting him off and began to get really close to our car. I think the proper term is tailgated, and started beeping his horn and waving his hands wildly with various hand gestures that I cannot imitate other than this one, right? So, so needless to say, he was angry. Now, the girls in the backseat of the car laid down. They thought that was the best strategy, just to hide. So now I'm driving where I don't know where I am without backseat drivers, because they're laying down crying and scared and also laughing. And I'm driving at an increased rate of speed, trying to get away from the guy tailgating me from behind, beeping his horn and telling me how much I'm number one. <laughs> Finally, I realized I wasn't gonna outrun him, I didn't know where I was, and so I pulled off at a gas station. I thought, this is like a public place. If he bludgeons me, maybe crowds will show up and protect me. The girls were yelling, don't get out of the car, don't get out of the car, as he pulled out, uh, or pulled off behind us. I thought, maybe my mouth can help me. Right? So literally, if they were thinking of quick enough, they would be like, no, John, this is digging the hole deeper. Don't get out of the car. Like they're screaming like, lock the doors. But I'm like, let me just get out for a minute. And this is the way the conversation went. I got out of the car and this, again, very large man got out of his car. And the first words out of my mouth were, I'm sorry, entirely my fault. I'm not from around here. And my backseat drivers were directing me. 
He took one glance to the car and saw the two teenage girls sheepishly looking up over the windows, assessed the situation, realized that I was no match for him because I was like all of 120 pounds. And he said, my bad, man. It's cool. I totally get it. I'm sorry. Have a good day. And that was the end of the scenario. Now, I have to be honest, that could have gone way, way, way worse. Imagine if I'd gotten out of the car and been like, it's go time. <laughs> you all think that's funny? I'm a tough guy. Don't, can't you tell by the way I hold my fists? I know how to fight. It would have been awful. But because I got out and immediately owned what I did and then said something nice to him, all of a sudden his entire perspective changed. You see, the reality is that words, they matter. Our words matter. If we shoot words at people aggressively, people are going to respond aggressively. If we direct words to people in a blessing, oftentimes people are going to respond in kind. So let's look back at that passage again. It's Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1. This passage is going to help us understand this a little bit better. And what I want to do is I want to set the scene for you, and then I want to take apart a couple of the words. So this comes from a book called Proverbs. This is a book of collected wise sayings. Tradition tells us it was written by Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived. Now, whether it was written by Solomon, whether you really think he was the wisest man or not is irrelevant. The point is that these are incredibly wise sayings. And we're going to be looking at this one in specific. And so I want to start out with that word gentle. It says a gentle answer. That word gentle, it means tender or delicate or soft, but not like tender, delicate, and soft in the sense that it's fragile, but rather tender hearted. Like the idea is that the word, it implies strength, but a sense of reserve. So the image that I think of, have you ever seen like a male lion? You know, male lions, they mostly just like lie around all day. They don't do a lot. You know, once in a while they'll fight other male lions. That's their main job. But otherwise, they just kind of lay around. The female lions do all the work. You've heard this before, right? The male lions are like babysitters. And so the little cubs will like climb all over the male lion. They'll like claw into their ears and bite on them. Have you ever seen that? It's incredible. You have this massive creature that could like kill that little cub in a second. And he's just kind of laying around while the cub is like hanging off his ear by its mouth, like going at him. And he just kind of like swats him off very gently and tender, right? Or maybe the, the idea is of a person who's big and rugged and, and tough and strong, but they're really a softy on the inside. Do any of you know people like that? Go ahead. If you're in person, go ahead and raise your hand. If you know a person who's big and strong and tough, but they're really tender, they're a softy on the inside. Online, go ahead and comment down below. How many of you know a person like that? Like three of you are raising your hands. Are you telling me you don't know any of those people? You only know soft-handed people like me, right? Like tender on the outside also. <laughs> That's what's going on with that word gentle. So don't think that that word means weak. The other word I want to highlight is this word wrath. The word wrath there, it can be translated rage or anger, but it can also be translated heat or fire. And the idea here is what's going on is this is like a burning anger or a burning rage that is all-consuming. Just as fire consumes all around it, this kind of wrath, it can consume all of you and all that's going on around you. Maybe you've been angry like that in the past. Maybe some of you have experienced that kind of burning anger, either from yourself or on the receiving end of it. But the point here is that if we answer or respond to people gently, that actually turns that away, it stifles it, it stops it. So this is this wisdom passage, but it's illustrated perhaps best in a story that I want to tell you. It comes from a different passage in your Bible. It comes from a book called 1 Samuel, and it comes from 1 Samuel chapter 25. Uh, it's kind of a long story, so I'm not going to read it to you, but I'm going to give you the John version. It's like the Reader's Digest version, but not as good, okay? So if you want to check me, if you want to fact check me, it's 1 Samuel chapter 25, but it's the story of David and this guy, Nabal, right? And Nabal had a wife by the name of Abigail, and all of the teens right now know that that means Abigail is really important because the Bible doesn't name people unless they're important. So David is out in the wilderness, and Nabal is this rich landowner in the wilderness. And Nabal is in the process of shearing sheep, like hundreds and hundreds of sheep, and sheep shearing was like a time of partying. And so David and his 600 soldiers that are with him, they, they send a few of them to Nabal and say, hey, can we join the party? And Nabal's response 
is basically, I don't know you. I don't know who you are. I think you're a runaway slave. And no, you can't join our party. So Nabal's thought is, I'm going to insult this guy who commands 600 trained soldiers. David's response, I think for those of you in person, you already have it up on the screen. David's response is the coolest thing. He says to his men, fasten your swords. It's like, load up, boys. We're going to go have some fun. David tells his men to put on their swords, and then we're told that as he's heading toward Nabal's uh, property with 400 of his 600 soldiers, it says that he had just got done making an oath that he was going to kill every man there, all of them. When Nabal's wise wife, Abigail, shows up, and she says to David, I'm so sorry. My husband is a fool, and he didn't mean what he said. Please accept our apology. Now, David has just made a vow to God that he's going to kill everyone. But at Abigail's plea, David says, I accept your words, and I accept your apology. And he tells the guys to turn around and head back out. And that's the end of that story. That's incredible. Incredible that here's a guy who's a warrior with warriors ready to do battle. And one person shows up and says, I'm so sorry. That was a mistake on our part. Please please accept our apology and show us grace. And David says, you're right. And he turns around and goes back. Now look, I, I tell you this story because again, I want to say to you, words matter. The words that we use, whether they're in person or online, on the phone or in writing, our words really, really matter. Right? And the further removed from a person you are, like on the phone, they can't read your facial expression. Online, they can't hear your tone. The further removed we get, the more and more the specific words we use really, really matter. The goal here, whether you want to think of honey or a gift, the goal here is that our words are a blessing. We want our words to bless other people because it turns out the world is this broken and hurting place. Amen? The world is, is like really broken and really hurting. As somebody actually said to me this week, I'm tired of hearing how broken and hurting the world is. I'm super sorry if you feel that way. I'm, I'm sorry if you feel like I'm tired of hearing this. The problem is, is the world just feels more and more broken and more and more hurting each and every day. So I don't want to get into like politics, but there was this big event that happened this week where like people were, were in the nation's capital. And I don't really care which side of this conversation you were on or not, but what I saw happen in the aftermath, because here's the thing, I don't really have national impact. I know that. I don't have state level impact. I hardly have community level impact. I have like impact in my family with my friends. And my guess is that for a lot of you, it's the same way. You don't have national or global impact. You don't really make a difference on state legislation, but you really matter to the people that are in your life. And what I saw happen was people on one side or another side begin to attack one another on social media, in their homes, among neighbors, over how they felt about what happened this week. That's what I really care about. So I put up this thing on social media. Before I posted it, you can go ahead and show it. Before I posted this, I asked my wife, should I do this? She said, don't do it. Uh, but in part, the part that matters, in part, this post was saying to people, it's okay. It's okay to be quiet, to be lost for words, and just to reflect in private. It's okay not to say anything, especially if all you have to say is things that are going to be damaging to other people, right? So I wanted to encourage the people who I thought maybe there were a few like me who didn't know what to think, who didn't know how to respond, who didn't know what, who, who didn't know what to say, but really badly wanted permission to just be quiet. <laughs> I've had people say to me, John, I deleted the Facebook app off my phone. I've deleted my Facebook account. I don't go on Instagram anymore. I've unfriended dozens of people or unfollowed hundreds the world is broken. I don't think that I can fix that. I don't think any of you can fix that for everyone. But I do think that we can fix that for ourselves, for our friends and family, for our connections and our contacts. And so again, I want to bring you back to that Proverbs 15.1. See, people are angry right now. Some people are looking for reasons to be angry. I want to encourage you by saying that a gentle answer turns away wrath. A gentle answer turns away wrath. 
My hope would be that when I see people from Foundation Church posting on social media, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, it would be things that are love, that are kind, that are building others up, or you take the advice of my mom, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. That's okay too. Sometimes I think we get caught in this trap that we're not allowed to do that. It's, it's okay not to say anything. Um, again, our words matter. You can spew your words out like bile, words filled with frustration, fear, and anger, and they can damage and harm other people. Or your words can flow out like honey, and they can bless. You have the choice. You have complete control over this. These are our words to live by. Again, whether it's honey or a gift, this is what they are, this is what the goal is. I have this one final question, and online folks, you can go ahead and comment down below. In person people, you can go ahead and comment if you want. Uh, but I really want you to actually think about this question and take it to heart. You see, this last question is, will you join me in using your words to bless? I like that. That was quick. That was quick. We heard a really quick yes. Will you join me in using your words to bless today, this week, this month, this year? Because I think our goal is to use our words to bless always, always. This doesn't mean not speaking truth or not speaking your opinion. It just means doing it in a way that doesn't harm, it doesn't damage, it doesn't tear down. Friends, these are our wise words today. I'm going to invite you to join me in prayer. God, sometimes our mouths, they get us in trouble. They cause more harm than good. And yet you say that our mouth is made for praise and for blessing. May we continually keep that in mind. May we continually use our words to bless others. May they be sweet like honey and awesome like a gift. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.